Welcome back to Road Race Retro. Just remember to keep getting the nice bits. Obviously, this is where the portrait of motion comes into play and the build gets serious. This is when we start putting the nice bits in, as you can see. Obviously, we've powder coated the axle and obviously the poly bushes are now fitted in. Um, obviously, Dave spent some good time yesterday on the car and got through some really nice jobs as well. The bushes were actually easier to fit them up, we thought. They actually slid in nicely with a little bit of lube, so we're happy with those. Um, we've cleaned all the chassis up. You know, this is just an example of how far we're actually going with this car. This thing, I'm not going to be one of those guys here, oh, it'll be better than factory, but like, you get the idea. Um, obviously, as you can see, the axle looks absolutely amazing. It was definitely worth polybushing that for the money. Um, obviously, I'm a bit of a Peter polisher, so we've obviously polished the exhaust up, which is obviously looking awesome now. And Dave's just getting ready to move on to the night runs and obviously get the night runs fitted up. Now, the next clip will be where it starts to get... Well, really cool. Once these night runs are fitted up with that polybushed and powder coated rear axle, it's just going to look tremendous. But yeah, these is the, the happy parts where we start and smile, where the car starts to really come together. As you can see now, this is where we want it to be. This is the kind of stuff that gets me excited. If you just look at obviously the quality of what, what obviously Dave's put together, it's just absolutely amazing. It's definitely, definitely worth getting that beam redone. Obviously, night runs goes without saying they just look absolutely phenomenal under there obviously being a bit of a pervert and polish the arch liners up and the chassis and the exhaust and stuff but this thing should be well it should be absolutely unbelievable but that's what we're looking at at the back end at the moment just got the brake lines to go on and that's the back end complete refurbing the calipers giving them a quick blast and once over and yeah so far so good take two here we go oh he's gone for it it? Nah. Moved about, isn't it? So, uh, on the next bit, to be fair, obviously I spoke to Dave this morning. Dave wasn't looking forward to doing this, but luckily enough, um, we have got another pair of hands here for a couple hours this morning. So, um, as you can see, the lads have basically dropped the full subframe out. So that's what we're looking at. Um, obviously, the engine was only built 750 miles ago, but we thought we'd have a look under here. We noticed a little bit of an oil leak. Um, which seems to be coming from here, which is very, very common with the Megs. To be fair, I've pushed that back in, but this was actually out. And obviously, as you can see on the bottom, it was just, wait, the auto focuses. It was basically starting to drip oil from there. So I'm glad we've had that out and obviously found that leak. Um, but yeah, obviously, this lads are just done cleaning the subframe off outside there. Now, I'm going to give that a quick wipe down and get this front anti roll bar in now. Another good part of the video. So we are absolutely flying now. Well, Dave's absolutely flying now, uh, doing a phenomenal job and we've got the horrible bits out the way and we're now starting to put the juicy bits on so um, this is what we like at the minute. Obviously as you can see the anti-roll bar, we dropped the subframe out, um, put the anti-roll bar in place, we're going to lift that up and we're going to paint that subframe as well on the underside. Um, as you can see, obviously we've gotten a rain of parts off so when we had the car up we noticed it was leaking a little bit of oil. Um, the oil was coming uh, from this seal here. There's a little seal in here and a cup pushes it in. And there's actually a bearing carrier here. But, where's it at? And it snapped off. Just wait for that to focus. It snapped off here. So we had to order all the new bits, which we've actually just got. But you can like, you can see the oil all over. It had dripped quite a bit. So as you can see down here, we've got the shaft out. Um, these are all the bits that we replaced. Now basically just said go through everything, everything that was slightly worn. We just want to rebuild this car and basically have it brand new, so that's what we've done. Um, there's the new bearing carrier from RPD Direct, so we've getting that, that's sorted. Um, the gearbox mount was brand new, so we didn't change that, that must have been done with the forged engine build. And then we've got the operating table where we ordered all the bits. Again, these are genuine RPD bits, we won't put anything else on this car, it's genuine bits only. So we've got those, um, we've got the drop links, we've got the, what's them? Ball joints, uh, no they're not ball joints are they, the track rod ends I think, yeah they are track rod ends, new track rod ends, we've got some rubbers to go in the front arches which are proven to be like unicorn piss because you can't get them anywhere the front arches, but we've got the grommets for when they go in, the back end now is starting to look, well it's looking great so again new genuine blanks from RPD so genuine rental parts again, um, what we're going to do is, we're not going to go too fancy on the pads just yet, obviously we are still at the point of where 
the car still needs a little bit of running in and it also needs tuning as well so we uh, got these lines here we got them made up from rival motorsport um, these lines here are normally pieced so there's a piece here and there's a piece at the top but we didn't want any weak points so we've literally had a full line made up goes right up and across the back axle so we've got full braided lines so there shouldn't be any weak points in that line should we need to push these brakes hard and put them under pressure and um, they should perform but as you can see obviously it's, everything's looking brand new in there now obviously the calipers were just a, a bit of a, a taffy up from me um what else have we done front arms so the front arms obviously we've polished these up we've wire wheeled them down I think we're just going to lacquer them to be fair uh, all them are polybush now as well we've obviously managed to lend a bearing press and we've pressed them bushes in which to be fair took a lot of pressure um, there's the old bearings out but yeah um, we are absolutely flying now again the other side it's just nice to see the build getting to this point where you know it's starting to give me something to smile about so we are definitely definitely moving on well now um, and once we get that in today that'll be it we've got the mountain plates for the cage obviously the plates themselves go through the floor because as you can see we've just basically um, whipped the bolt through there for the cage but you need to put plates on here obviously for strengthening so it doesn't pull the bolts through the floor should we ever need the roll cage obviously fingers crossed we don't ever need that but in case we did obviously safety um, is the key here and that's what we're aiming for we're aiming for a fully built professional car that's going to do the business um, and we're not too far away now so we've getting on to the front end now not going to lie we have had a few little teething problems um, we found out obviously the drive shaft on the passenger side is aftermarket so the obviously the end nuts were slightly different we've managed to get around that obviously as you can see the roll bars in place now we've got the nitrons fitted up to the front up to them lovely top mounts there new brake lines putting on now the problem that we've had is um don't get us wrong we've built plenty of McGann's, but this is the first set with the nitrons on now the problem that we've got is we ran bcs on the last one that we built and didn't have a problem with standard drop links the problem we've got at the moment the drop link obviously from the anti-roll bar to the coil over we estimate this gap here to be about about 220 ish something like that the standard drop links on the McGann's are 274 which is them those are 274 so obviously yesterday when we tried to zip everything up at the front we realized that the standard drop link just wasn't going to work um those were expensive as well for what they were i think they're about 80 quid just for the original drop links so i might have to try and send those back to rpd if you still got the packet uh contacted avo yesterday and avo found um contacted avo yesterday and avo doing an adjustable drop link for the car um, between 190 mil to 220 so they're extendable obviously heavy duty and hard wear and so we've had to order some drop links uh, from Avo to get that problem sorted out I mean it's only a small teething problem but it is a bit of a pain in the ass because yesterday obviously Dave felt like he was really getting some traction with it we were going to get somewhere we are doing really well with it well Dave's doing really well with it but uh, we want the interior and everything back in yesterday but the drop links have set us back obviously the interior is not going to be great to do it on the ramp we need it on its wheels off the ramp so we're just waiting for these drop links coming but obviously polybush bottom arms are in now which is great um, and we are moving along a little bit once the drop links come we should be able to get the trim and everything back in but hey ho teeth and problems so you know we, we're building the car from scratch um, these things are going to happen with a unfamiliar coilover setup as well so uh, we are getting there now and obviously just waiting for these drop links landing i'm going to put an end to part seven here and then it's slightly short and the reason for that is because i feel like i should put the keys in here um i feel like part eight is probably going to be the best part of the actual series as in the car will actually start to look like a race car we'll have it back on its wheels we'll have the trim in um, we'll have the shifter in, we'll have the carpets and everything back in and it should start to look like a means business so a party it'll be a port, an important one and I think we'll start fresh for that one with the interior and the car back on its wheels um, why am I doing the end of part 7? this way you might ask well, there's a reason to make sure I don't crush into anybody I'm doing it in the car because this is going to lead into another video now, a bit of background with me at the moment I've basically bought something, again, it'll be another video, I've bought something that's quite special to me that I've been looking at for quite a long time now, but the prices of rose, rose is an understatement, the prices have soared lately on the car that I wanted to buy, 
I managed to find this particular car locally and it was in the money it had the right miles but unfortunately being honest I couldn't afford it so I've had to let some cars leave um, the E38 7 series which you saw early on in the channel it was a really nice car I have had to sell that to get some funds in so that one's gone I've also had to sell the daily 320d tour to get the money in as well um, it is what it is I need the money in to buy the car so those two have had to go now this is where it gets interesting the Turin was obviously my daily I used it every single day without fail it was a great car however I had no choice I needed the money out of it so I sold it which still left me with a small problem I still needed a daily car but I needed a daily car that wasn't going to break the bank and was going to do kind of what I needed it to do so I was looking for something to kind of do everything now this is the next video that we're going to lead into now with me I am from an area uh, it's listen it's rough right I'm from a place in the northeast if you're watching it from up and down the country called Peter Lee or Horden some people know it it's a pit village um, I was basically brought up on a council estate there wasn't a lot of money about at the time so the way my mind works which by the way is a very strange place in here but the way that my mind actually works is I get massively excited when I get a bargain bargains excite me more than the bigger purchases I've always been the same and I feel like I'm going to do a video on this car because it definitely deserves it. I feel personally like I've bought the best car ever for £500. £500, bear in mind, just, just process that for a split second. What does £500 buy you in today's market? With everything going absolutely mental in price, things are massively expensive. Marketplace on Facebook was all over inflated in prices. eBay is over inflated in prices. So if I said to you, go and buy a good car for £500, 95% of people in today's world would actually struggle to achieve that. Never mind getting something that's fun to drive and reliable for the same money, which I think I've achieved with this car. And that's why I'm over the moon with it. And that's why I'm going to do a video. I'm not going to go too much into it and spoil the actual video. I'm hoping this isn't a common car, by the way. You don't see a lot of these. And I'm hoping that just by the backdrop, drop, sorry, people won't realize what I'm actually in today. But it's basically 1.4 16 valve petrol. It's a little four door hatchback. Would I say, I nearly said hot hatch there, but I'm not going to say that. It's a mildly warm hatchback. It doesn't have a lot of power. But nevertheless, it, with these little cars, it isn't about the power. It's how they make you feel and how they drive. I basically spent the weekend in this car. Well, Sunday, I went out early and went across some B roads. Mechanically, what I've bought here is absolutely awesome. There's no issues with it. But the bodywork has suffered a little bit over time, which when we go to the proper video, I will actually show you that. And I'll show you kind of what £500 buys you. But anybody, and I mean anybody who's into cars, will know how much of a good car this is for what it actually cost me. It's basically a 1.4 16 valve petrol engine. Uh, it does about 50 miles a gallon on the motorway, which again for a little car's amazing. It has a six speed box. It's 2007 in the year. It has Bluetooth in the year as well, which is obviously quite a nice touch. Mind you, it took me three days to work it out, but nevertheless, I'm on there now. And that's all I'm gonna tell you. So we'll lead in the video for the best car for 500 pound. And I will show you exactly what I've bought. And again, earlier on at this particular part of the video, I did mention that I had bought another car that I had to get some money in for. I will do a full video with that and I'll put that on the channel as well. It's quite a special car and I think people really appreciate it. Um, so I'll end part seven for the Meg build here for now. Um, I am just outside of the dentist about to go in to get an injection to get a tooth pulled out. So as you can imagine, I'm not ecstatic about that, but that's another story. Hey ho, we get on with it. It is what it is. Uh, thanks very much for staying tuned. Again, the channel is getting some nice views now. The subscribers are going up slowly, but steadily. Uh, if you like watching the videos, great. If you don't, hey ho, I'm, I'm not for everybody, you know, I'm one of those guys. But please do like, please share, please keep subscribing. Hit the bell icon at the top right hand uh, corner of the page, and that'll get you all the updates of the videos we put them on. We are going to try and keep the content constant, so we're going to try and do one video per week just to keep people interested. But the next video, it'll be quality. It's the best car ever for £500. That'll be the title, so keep an eye out for that one. It's coming soon.